Rejoice in the Lord always, he says. No matter what you're going through, just rejoice. Praise God. It doesn't say call Joyce. It says rejoice. Amen? Praise God. <laughs> Things are happening. God's on the move. Oh, thank you, Lord. Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. What's a, you know, a gate is always associated with an opening. Amen? So he's talking about a path. Which one are you going to go into? And there are many who go into it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult. Everyone say difficult. That means it's going to be challenging and trying, and the enemy's going to do everything he can to prevent you from going the right way. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. That's eternal life. And there are a few who find it. That's pretty sad. He gives us the example. He says, look, at these are the things that are going to interfere with you trying to walk the right path. There will be false prophets. Hello. We've got false media. Amen. Things that we hear, things that we see, things that we read, things, music, all of these things have a foul voice to them in one way or another that cause problems to people. He said, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. You know, one of the fruits you always want to know is it, it, when you're judging a spirit is what is its desire? Desires are always associated with the fruits. Desires. What's your desire? Now, your heart is the core of all your desires. And your heart is also a character of your spirit. What is your desires? You will know them by their fruits, by their actions, whether they respond or they react, whether they carry anger and hatred or, you know, whether it works of the flesh. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Every, even so, every good tree bears good fruit. In other words, the word here, tree, means spirit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. God uses symbols on the word. A good tree, a good spirit, cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear or bad spirit bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you shall what? You're going to know them. You know, but you and I are to test all spirits. It doesn't mean we judge it. We test it. Amen? We're, we're to be fruit inspectors. We're going to inspect fruits. Verse 21. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Why? Because... They're not bearing the correct fruit. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, I, uh, uh, we have prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. Let me share something with you. The gifts are not, are, you can use the gifts of the Spirit and still go to hell. These people were, were using those things, but they had no relationship. The relationship was mind, not heart. And this is what we want to talk about today because this is what God's trying to bring us into, a heart relationship, not a mind relationship. We've talked about this before, living out of the spirit instead of the mind. Amen? He said, then I will declare it to them, I never knew them. Depart from me because you what? Practice what? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Lawlessness is offenses towards God. Again, we are in a time right now where many are falling out of the kingdom and also coming, coming into the kingdom. Gate is a doorway entrance to a path of lawlessness or rebellion or darkness. Or you're entering truth and light and freedom. There was no heart fellowship. Only works with many people. Living out of the mind instead of out of the heart. Again, the your heart, the core of all desires. What's your desire? What do you talk about more than anything? Amen? 
There's got to be a heart fellowship. It's inner relationship with the Lord. It's spirit to spirit. And Luke 13, 22. And Jesus went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then one said to him, Lord, are there, are there few who are what? Saved. And he said to him, strive to enter through the gate, the narrow gate. In other words, fight. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able to. When, when once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he will answer you and say to you, I do not know who you are from or where you came or where you're from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and, and you taught in our streets. But he will say to you, I tell you, I don't know you. Where are you from? Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. Wow. They will come from the east and from the west, from the north and the south and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed there are last who are be first and those who are first will be last. Again, he says strive, fight, learn to enter that gate. Too many people quit. They give up. They're not fighters. They become wimpy. They become soulish. Woe was measies. God is saying you can't. That, that's how the enemy attacks. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. That's a heart-to-heart -heart fellowship. See, even when you worship, you're worshiping from the heart, even though because the Bible says out of the mouth speaks the heart, right? But in that, so when we worship, many people still worship out of their minds and not their heart because they really haven't had connection with the Lord yet. There are people 30, 40 years saying they're Christians and still haven't made a connection with the Lord yet. They're still living by their works. We had an example of that, Mar Mary and Martha, remember? That story of Mary and Martha. One was at the feet of Jesus. The other one was out doing works. The Lord said, she's chose the right thing. What are you doing over there making pizza? <laughs> Verse 4, and I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you came short in no gift eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into what? Fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you should speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind or thoughts and in the same judgments. Become like-minded, fellowship of the heart, not just the mind. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. Speak it together. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like, my, look, let me tell you something. When there is a heart-to-heart -heart relationship with the Lord, you become like-minded not only with Him, but those who have the heart-to-heart -heart relationship. Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Again, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, 
taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Oh, yes. Fellowship of the Spirit, like-minded. We think the same. In other words, things that come across our path, you and I would make the same choices. Does everybody get it? We make the same choices according to righteousness and justice. It doesn't mean that you're going to make the same choices of what mechanic you're going to go to. Hello? I'm talking about things that pertaining to righteousness and justice. We would make the same choices. In Ephesians 5, in verse 11. Have no what? Fellowship with the unfruitful works of what? Darkness. Why? Because it will affect you, won't it? Contaminate you. But rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things are exposed and are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you work circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are what? They are what? They are evil. Have no fellowship with darkness or the fruits of darkness, but rather what? Expose it. Expose it. Too many people pet and compromise darkness. They're afraid they're going to offend someone. Who cares? Amen? Amen. Now, you release when God says to release things, not when you want to release things. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14. Do not be unevenly yoked together with what? Unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what? Communion has with light, with darkness. And what accord has Christ with Belial? And what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement? Now, this is very powerful. Agreement. Agreement. Because many people don't realize that they are agreeing with fruits of darkness. See, if you don't expose it, you agree with it. If you know of it. Amen? Amen. If you protect it, you agree with it. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. If they do what? Therefore, if they come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what's unclean, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you. So he's telling us, look, at, let's have a heart-to-heart -heart relationship. Amen? What do you got to do? Well, he says, don't agree with this stupid stuff. Come out from among them. Don't touch things that are unclean. I will be in you. I'll be your God. I'll be a father to you. And you'll be my sons and daughters. That's a relationship. Amen? The relationship with God starts off as a child. And it maintains a child, even though you begin to grow and mature. You know, one day I was in the spirit, and, and, uh, and I've shared this before, that all of a sudden I found myself in the garden, sitting on a table, uh, on a table, and a, a bench, like a park bench. And the Lord was, came in and sat next to me. He began to talk to me and tell me. And I was a kid. I was like in shorts, and, and I was a child in sneakers. And I must have been, I don't know, six or seven or eight, I don't know. And he was telling me things, and we were talking, and, 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 and the next thing I know, this big, huge, white horse walks in. It was beautiful, ginormous. And I saw a coat hanger. Not, not a coat hanger, uh, a coat, you know, those old-style wooden coat things that hold up coats, and they sit in the corner, and you can throw your hat on it and whatever. And on it, there was a glittering gold. And he went and took off the gold, and it was a full armor of God. And the next thing he said to me, it's time for you to go. 
And the next thing I knew, I was on this horse with that full armor of God on. And I was an adult. He said, never lose sight that I'm your father and you're my child. Even though you become a warrior, never lose sight. We never approach him in an area as a warrior. We approach him as a father. Amen. We approach him as the king. We approach him in humility and humbleness. And never approach the Lord and tell him you're his humble servant. Puke. Oh, Lord, I'm your humble servant. He doesn't want to hear that. He wants to see it. Amen. He wants to see it. You don't have to tell God you're humble. Believe me, he knows it or not. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. First John chapter one, verse one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. These things we write to you, that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. That's a rebuke and a half. There's a lot of people say, I believe, I, I know Jesus, I believe in Jesus, but the word believe means to what? Follow. So if we say we fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Why? Because they're still having fellowship out of the thought, out of mind and not out of the spirit or out of the heart. It's not a true heart relationship. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, it cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. No heart relationship, only mind. Not living out of the spirit, but living out of the flesh. It's a difference. In Philippians chapter 3, 7. So we are, you know, I call, you know, again, this is the area where people are uh, generic or genetic. <laughs> Amen. They're, they're generic because they're imitations. They're living out of their mind. There really isn't that true relationship. So if you're genetic, you've inherited. It's inherited. You're genetic. You're the DNA. There's a true relationship with him. You self-examine yourself all the time. In fact, you look for conviction because you don't want anything to interfere with that relationship. You want to stay as close to the Lord as you can. And you avoid agreeing with stupid stuff. Amen. Philippians 3, 7. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost. For the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. In other words, he's saying, listen, I, I, I want to know his persecutions. I want to know how his offenses. I, I want to be a part of all of that so that I may die to myself. Not 
Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reach it forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind, have this way of thinking. And if anything you think otherwise, God will even reveal this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind in fellowship. Amen. Fellowship of his sufferings, letting go of your past fellowships of people, places, and things that cause sin or idolatry. Breaking the fellowship in the spirit is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to get you back into the flesh where you begin to have fellowship and justification out of your mind and not out of your heart. Romans 8, verse 5. You know, when there's true heart fellowship, God will release revelation to you. When that nugget of revelation is released, and it brings a closeness to him, the restraints of your flesh get stronger. You're restraining your flesh now. The Bible says when there's lack of revelation, people loosen the restraints. So they're, now they're in the flesh again. And that's because they're trying to have a relationship out of the mind. That's what religion is. Religion is out of the mind. Amen? In fact, the word religion means bondage. So we're not religious. We want relationship. We are his children. He's our father. That's how it starts. And you build on that relationship as father, son, father, daughter. And then he begins to build. And as he begins to build, you become servant. You can become faithful. You become warrior. You can become all things through him. Even Paul said, I became many things that many may be saved. But the one thing he never lost was his relationship. See, today people are giving up that inner heart relationship for the things of the world, materialism, wealth, money, this, that, whatever. They're giving it up. They're spending more time trying to build their empire instead of the empire of God. That's where we are. It was, you know, we need to be about the Father's business. Amen? The Father's business. Not the flesh business. Romans 8, 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be fleshly minded or carnal minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Why? Because if you're carnally minded or fleshly minded, you're going to produce lawlessness. Amen? It says, because the carnal mind is enmity towards against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please their Father or their God. See, it goes back to their God, not their father, because they've lost relationship. See, many people have drifted from father to God. Does everybody get that? I mean, there's a time when we acknowledge he's God, yes. You know, you go out and tell people, yeah, my father said this, or whatever they're like. What do you think you are, Jesus? You know? No, but I'm his son. Well, Jesus is his son. Well, his spirit lives in me. So I'm his son. Listen, after my visitation from the Lord, it was very difficult for me to operate in this world. It was very difficult. Why? Let me tell you something. Because I felt like Jesus. Because I was so filled with the spirit. Dreams and visions every, all the time. As soon as I closed my eyes, I was gone. It took about two months to be able to function in this world. My wife had to drag me to places. I couldn't wear any gold. I couldn't do anything. Even to get our wedding rings made, she had to drag me to a place. Everything to me was 
dirty. The world was dirty. And it was like, you know, Moses came out, he had a bag on his head, you know. Remember the veil? <laughs> he was the unknown preacher. <laughs> but the glory was fading away. Amen. And I was trying to hold on as much as I could. That song we sang tonight about when I see you again. Oh, let me tell you. I can't wait to see him again. Hallelujah. <laughs> fellowship of his sufferings. Again, the fellowship in the flesh is death. Fellowship in the spirit is what? Life. And again, we, we falter sometimes. We get, we fall. I mean, nobody's perfect. Amen. We falter, but we get right back to it. It's like the Holy Spirit kicks you in the butt, slaps you in the back of the head and says, come on, man, you know better than that. Yes, Lord. Sorry. You know, if you step on somebody's foot, you don't tell them, why would you put it in a way? You tell them, excuse me. Amen? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 7. Now, therefore, it is utter, already an utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. Why do you not rather accept the wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? No, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornication, idolaters, adulterers or homosexuals or sodomites nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revelries nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God in other words that doorway is narrow and difficult they can't get in and such were some of you but you were washed but you were sanctified but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God all things are lawful for me but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and stomach for the foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to the harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Do you know that uh, out of marriage, everyone you've slept with, you receive all the curses from their family line. It comes down. Anyone you've ever slept with before covenant, even when you basically get married, you still receive the curses down the family line. That's why it's important they be broke. Because you become one flesh now. That means there's an exchange there. Everything that came down my family my line, my wife received. Everything that came down her family line, I received. But we broke them on our honeymoon. That's what we did on our honeymoon. We did self-deliverance. Verse 18, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your own body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Psalm 24, verse 3. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place or his presence? This is where heart relationship is. He's saying something very important. He says, who has a clean hands and a pure heart? Oh, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol? 
nor sworn deceitfully. How many of y'all know that when you repent of something, you haven't done it? It's over with. When you ask God's forgiveness, it's gone. Doesn't mean you won't reap for it, but it's done. I mean, everything I've ever done in my life, if I ask God's forgiveness, he will give it. Yes, he puts it under the blood. He doesn't remember it, but we have a tendency in the carnal mind to. That's where the enemy plays with you. See, he's trying to give you, get you to live from your past instead of the future. Amen? We all battle that. Believe me, if I could flush my old mind down the toilet, I would. Hallelujah. <laughs> he who has clean hands and a pure heart has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord. How many of y'all want to be blessed? Well, here's the guideline. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him and who what? Seek his face. Seek his face. A pure heart and clean hands. There's something about heart relationship. Two things are really involved in it also. Love and faith. Love and faith. When there's a heart relationship with the Lord, Faith never fails. Faith never fails. Remember, God is love. Amen? God is love. Love is not, I'm going to try and put this the best way I can. Love is a choice. It's not always a feeling. Not that emotion won't come afterwards. But love is a choice. It says God first loved us. That's why we should love him. But we didn't love him at first. We loved him because he first loved us. And then we made the choice. Again, man, I hear this saying all the time, well, love at first sight. No, that's lust at first sight. Love is different. Let's go to something about love. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 3. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love does what? Suffers short, long. And is what? Kind. Okay, let's repeat that again, okay? Love what? Suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. It doesn't say it's a feeling, does it? No, it's a choice. The three emotions out of love is peace, joy, and righteousness. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you want a heart relationship with the Lord. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Are we in perilous times? You know, we definitely are coming. We are, we've been in the beginning of sorrows, and we're coming out of it. And we're almost like, Start a tribulation because in the first parts of tribulation, most people won't even know it yet. But there'll be parts of tribulation that will begin to, even some of the seals will begin to bro be broken, but it won't be the full rising of tribulation. But we are so uh, mixing in it now in preparation. Everything is being prepared for it. And we are in the days of perilous times. For men will be lovers of themselves. Well, if they're lovers of themselves, they have no heart relationship with the Lord. That's for sure. Lovers of money, they're no relationship with the Lord. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good. They are traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness and denying and power. And from such people... Turn away. Turn away. Does everybody get it? This is where we're at right now. There's no heart relationship at all with them. In fact, there's no fellowship with them. Some of them have, and they've 
departed because they've sold their souls out for wealth and fame and for the pleasures of this world. But nobody escapes. Nobody escapes. Now I'm going to close at Matthew 25. In verse 1. Again, you know why the world doesn't see the way you see things. Amen? Because they're, they're not in Christ at all. But it's disheartening when believers don't see what you see as what's going on in the world. Because they're caught up in their own self-building. Instead of building into the kingdom. They may have a form of godliness, but what does God say? He says, look at if you believe me, you'll follow me. If you love me, you'll obey me. Amen? Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Believe it or not, it may hardly be believed to you, but when you've repented and came into the kingdom of God, no matter what you've done in your past, you be a virgin. Now five of them were wise and five stupid or foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Now, if you're in a relationship with the Lord, he's going to tell you things to come. Amen? But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Heart, heart relationship. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. And then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Now grab hold of this, because oil comes by worship. When you, what does the Bible say? The word says, the Father seeks those who are worshiping in truth and spirit, not in truth and flesh, not out of the mind, but out of the spirit. When you worship him, see, there's a place. And again, some people haven't reached that yet. But when you do, you'll sense a filling. You'll sense some, a change in you. Every time you come into God's presence, you leave refreshed. Amen? You leave anew every time. You may even have another step. It's, you can leave healed. And your effect, your healing is in process. We never leave empty-handed if we'll worship him in truth and spirit. Heart. You know, some people have a hard time. They're still half mass because they're still half dead. You know, isn't a half mass over when somebody's dead or whatever? They're not fully dead. This is full surrender. Amen? This is surrender. This is survival. <laughs> still fighting for their lives. This is, what the heck am I doing? All trust, surrender. You know, my daughter, when she was real young, she, she couldn't, of course, she was learning how to speak, but she said a few words, and she would do this, hold you, hold you. My wife and I say that to the father, hold you, dad, hold you. We come to hold you. <laughs> Why? Because we want to get picked up by him and held. Oh, Hallelujah. Verse 7, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Why did their lamps go out? No heart fellowship. No worship. But the wise answered, saying, no, man, lest there should not be enough for us and you. Go rather yourself, who sell, go to those who sell, and buy for yourself. Listen, nobody can sell you the oil. I can't give you my oil. You can't give me your oil. You got to get it from the throne room of God and worship. And that's got to be a heart. See, what you sow is what you reap, amen? So when you're coming out of a process of coming out of the world, you're sowing, 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 sowing. God is acknowledging that. He's protecting you no matter what. But when you've come into the kingdom and you're into the kingdom and you're now going from one chamber to another, there's a change there. There's a heart change. It's no longer a mind. Discipline leads to relationship. Relationship leads to a love affair. 
So you start off with being disciplined. You do what you got to do. It will build a relationship. Then a love affair starts. Now there's a heart relationship. Amen. But you got to start somewhere. Amen. Hallelujah. It says in verse 10. And while they went to go by, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, I surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Coming. Praise God. Be ready in season and out. Amen. Listen, when you're in a heart-to-heart -heart relationship, you are ready. You are unready. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask that you protect the seed that's been imparted to each and every one of us that will grow and bear fruit for your glory and bring to remembrance in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.